Hello again, welcome back. We've been talking about protocols, what they are. We've looked at a few protocols, uh, Needham Schroeder and Otway Reese. Let's uh, ask the question of how one goes about showing that a protocol is correct. Well, that's an important question because protocols are very widely used. And yet there have been a number of protocols which were out there and used for a long time before someone noticed a flaw in them. So how would one go about deciding whether a a protocol actually met its, uh, its specification. In particular, you know, how does one decide uh, wh what the attacker can do? A uh, spy or somebody eavesdropping on a protocol, how can they disrupt things? We saw a number of examples of that, but how does one characterize what the spy or what the attacker can accomplish? What sorts of messages can they interject? That sort of thing. Okay. People have put forward various ways of uh, attacking this problem or looking at how one verifies protocols. One fairly widely used method is what's called a belief logic. A belief logic is a modal logic uh, that allows you to reason about what the, pr the principles or the parties in a protocol can uh, are entitled to believe after they receive a message. And we'll look in some detail at that method. There have been other methods used um, for example, state exploration, uh, or model checking as it's also called, is you somehow model the protocol and the state transitions that occur within it, and then you make an argument that certain bad things can't happen because bad states are unreachable. And that's an automated process uh, used fairly widely. And then finally, people have used general purpose theorem provers and logics to reason about protocols basically by doing an induction over the traces of the protocol. And that's also a fairly widely used and successful met methodology. But all we're going to look at is belief logics. So what is a belief logic? Well, it's a modal logic of belief. Uh, what's a modal logic? That's uh, uh, standard propositional and predicate logic with some additional uh, primitives and rules of inference built in to reason in about a particular domain, in this case, belief. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a particular belief logic called the band logic in our next lecture. The difficulty is, um, if you think about a protocol, really it's a program. It's a series of message exchanges. And so how does one extract from that series of messages that you're flying around beliefs and say, for example, if I receive a particular message, what am I entitled to believe? Well, we'll talk about how that happens. In addition, you have to specify a certain number of initial beliefs that, that uh, describe sort of the background of running the protocol. For example, if you remember in Needham Schroeder, we had a, uh, a, a server which uh, generated keys, and so we have a belief that that server knows about generating keys and can do that correctly. Okay, so we've said several times that protocols are crucial to the, to the functioning of the internet, and so it would be great if we could figure out a way to get them right. But reasoning about protocols is difficult, and it requires formalizing somehow the behavior and the set of assumptions that we're going to be making, and also what people are entitled to, to believe from those things. And one way to do that is by a belief logic, and that's what we'll investigate next. Thanks.